glaube, ich muss mich einfach. I think I just have to concentrate on staying alive. Und zwar with common sense and caution. Vorsicht. Katja Alexeyev lives with a disorder that causes her muscles to waste away. It also affects her breathing, placing her in the widely discussed high-risk group. The coronavirus would likely pose a far greater danger to her life and health than it would otherwise. For several weeks, Katja chronicled her life and talked about her fears and concerns in a vlog or video diary. By late March 2020, around 64,000 people in Germany had caught the novel coronavirus. Italy had already set a chilling example. Many hospitals there were in a state of emergency. They'd run out of beds for all the COVID-19 patients. Thousands of people were dying. Was the same fate in store for Germany? Around that time, 30-year-old Katja recorded her first video message. She was terrified of catching the virus herself and hardly ever left her home in Cologne. She started having panic attacks. Any lung inflammation could prove fatal. I keep hearing reports that now, neighboring countries are having to decide who survives and who doesn't. Who gets medical care and who doesn't? That they're literally making life or death decisions. And when I visualize that, I know all too well that if this situation arose here, the odds for me would be very, very bad. In all probability, I couldn't or they wouldn't let me survive. Katja suffers a disorder that affects her muscles and her lungs as well, so her breathing often has to be supported by a ventilator. Before the COVID-19 crisis, this was part of her routine and her oxygen supply was secured. But recently, she had a technical problem with her equipment and suddenly her healthcare supplier wouldn't send any of its employers to see her. Then you start imagining the wildest things. After I hung up, I wondered if a time would come when they wouldn't show up at all, because they didn't have any ventilators left. Until a few days ago, a ventilator wasn't really anything special. And now it's exactly what we don't have enough of. And that, more than anything, is what's been keeping me alive all these years. Und was mich einige Jahre vor allen Dingen auch am Leben erhalten hat. In an attempt to keep the pandemic under control, the German government urged people here to limit their contacts and keep a distance from each other. Only two people were allowed together at a time. But the reality often looked very different. I don't go out among people. Recently, I tried to take a walk just because the walls were closing in on me. But then I noticed that people aren't really taking care to keep their distance from each other. And since I belong to the high-risk group, that makes me very nervous. So a walk ends up causing me more tension than relief. These days, if she wants to catch a little sun, Katya feels she can only go outside in her own courtyard. This is where we met her and one of her assistants in early April. Katya has an assistant with her round the clock to help her manage her daily life so she can live outside of institutions. Now some people in Germany are asking when the social distancing rules can be relaxed. For now, everyone has to observe the rules. And when the time comes that they say only the high-risk group has to stay home and everyone else can start going outside, then my assistants will probably go about their normal lives. But that's actually the greatest danger. 
momentan auch die größte Gefahr. And I'm worried that it'll just get even more for me. As part of their job, Katya's assistants have to get very close to her. Now the risk of infection hasn't made it easier by any means. But Jana, Katya's assistant for today, makes protection the highest priority. I think Katya has a wonderful way of formulating her needs without making me feel like she's stepping on my toes. Because it is a matter of life and death for her. Even if she tells me to wash my hands again 13 times, I don't take it personally. In Germany, personal protection equipment is in short supply. Katya's assistants can't find any face masks. Without them, they can't give Katya the physical therapy she urgently needs to combat her aches and pains. On April 9th, German Health Minister Jens Spahn was saying it might be possible to ease up on the lockdown after Easter. Chancellor Angela Merkel called for discipline over the holidays, saying the situation was still uncertain. Equipment. Katja had something else to worry about. Her mother would soon have to return to her job. She works at a school. If Katja's team of assistants proved to be unavailable, her mother was her only backup option. The pressure was growing not to become ill at any cost. My mother is my safety net. She's already brought me through so many lung inflammations and stuck with me in difficult circumstances. And now, for the first time, that's no longer possible. Katja also feels uneasy over the prospect that, should she become infected, she might not be allowed to have anybody with her in the hospital. As things stand, corona patients are not allowed visitors in hospital. On April 15th, all of Germany was looking to Berlin. The government announced the first easing up of the lockdown. In May, pupils would be going back to school, and smaller businesses and hair salons would be allowed to reopen. I've got a team of nine people, and they'll have to go back to their normal lives within the limits of what's possible. And that means higher odds of my catching the virus. So I have to assume that I'll be getting it eventually. And all I can do is hope that adequate health care measures can be taken when I fall ill. By April 28th, 156,000 people in Germany had caught the coronavirus, and the infection rate was climbing again. By then, each infected person was passing it on to one other person on average. Katja felt like she was climbing the walls. After six weeks indoors, she ventured out among other people again. Five cents back, okay? Thank you. Don't go off and leave it. No. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks a lot. I just need to be independent again for a change. Without sending someone else to take care of things for me. I want to be able to do it for myself. That's very important to me. And that's why I decided to venture out very cautiously. Katja is also suffering from the pandemic financially. After completing her degree in social work, her student loan ended. But meanwhile, the job market has stagnated. I have to send off applications now and find a job to be able to survive here. And for that, I have to go out 
wahrscheinlich als Sozialarbeiterin eher wenig As a social worker, I probably Und won't be able to accomplish much from home. Mich darauf vorbereiten. So I'll have to find some way to get by. Ja, mit dem Keeping in mind that we're in the midst of a pandemic. Katia's been commenting on her life during the coronavirus crisis on her vlog for over a month now. And she's begun to take a more positive view of the situation. I'm always afraid of getting infected. But I think fear is more paralyzing than it is enabling. I think I just have to concentrate on staying alive and doing it with common sense and caution as well. But I think I'd rather distance myself from fear now. When the pandemic first started, I was extremely scared that it would spill over to this country. I was having panic attacks, and now I want to get free of that and concentrate on how to make the absolute best of this situation, so I'll be able to enjoy my life a little. In spite of the warnings of a second and third wave of infection, Germany is gradually returning to normal life. Katja would have liked it to be even more gradual. As she sees it, many uncertainties remain. I think it's really sad and just a shame that no real precautions are being taken for dealing with people from the high-risk group. From my circle of friends, I get the feeling that many people are tending to stay isolated. And that just can't be the way to go. Okay.